Balance changes are coming to Brawl Stars, including a Daryl rework, finally, and I'm gonna go over every single one, so make sure you stick around until the end to find out every single buff and nerf that's coming next season. Let's get right into the video and start out with the buffs. Our first buff goes to Willow, and she gets a 50% shield up from a 25% shield whenever mind controlling another brawler. This is absolutely huge for her because Willow has always been a high skill brawler, and finally getting a better shield whenever she's mind controlling another brawler just makes her so, so much better in the meta, especially in solo showdown. However, I don't think this is going to make a huge change in competitive play. I really only think we're going to see more Willows in Showdown. So for that reason, she's probably one of the weaker buffs on this list. And by the way, some of the buffs on this list are absolute crazy, including some of the nerfs. I don't think all of them were needed, but you'll just have to stick around to find out which ones weren't needed. The next buff goes to Ash, and Ash only loses 10% of his health as opposed to the 25% he lost before the update. Again, I see no changes happening here in the competitive meta. Ash just isn't that good of a bro and won't be for a while if they don't make some immediate changes to his damage or his health. So you won't be seeing him more in ranked, maybe for the first week or so, but after that he's just gonna go back to being one of the least used brawlers in the game. Coming up next is Grom. Grom actually gets a basic attack damage buff, and now it only takes 5 shots to charge his super, which I think is very, very good for Grom. Grom is a super, super mid brawler, but after this update, I think Grom's usage rate will definitely go up, and we will definitely be seeing him more in the competitive meta right now. The supercharge rate definitely, definitely affects him more than the damage because now he can get a super way faster. And since his super is super wide in range, it just makes him a whole lot better since he can recycle it way faster. Up next, we have a Mandy buff, surprisingly, with a buff to her star power. Now has a 40% shield instead of a 30% shield. Seeing as Mandy is already one of the best in the meta right now, I'm super, super surprised that that star power got a buff, but I'm just guessing that since the other star power is used way, way more than the shield star power, they had to buff it to even her out a little bit. But I still don't really think it was necessary, and if anything, they should have nerfed the other star power. So Mandy's usage rate will definitely be going up a lot more, but I don't think other people are going to use her shield star power as much. Up next, one of my favorite brawlers is getting a buff, and that is Stu. He's getting a 300 health buff, which is absolutely insane for Stu, because you know that he has the star power that heals him whenever he uses his dash, and now he has more room to use that, which is so good for him, and he stays alive way longer, obviously. I think Brawl Stars is definitely trying to get more S-tier brawlers that don't have a hypercharge, such as Mandy and Stu, which is honestly a good idea, because most brawlers who are in S-tier are one of the best in the game, probably have a hypercharge, if not do have a hypercharge. Tara is getting a buff to her shadows, which is absolutely insane. They are all, one's getting a 400 health buff, and the other's getting a 600 health buff. That is absolutely insane for her, because Tara is just a great, great well-rounded brawler, especially with her shadows going right to the enemy, or healing the teammates. She can be a very supportive or a very attacking, aggressive brawler. It depends on what star powers and gadgets you use, and I think she's just a very well-rounded brawler for not having a hypercharge. I see her being used a lot more in the competitive meta, so this is absolutely insane for her. Penny is also getting a buff, and her cannon is getting a 600 health buff, which is pretty good for Penny, and I see her, if she had a hypercharge in the future, being one of the best brawlers in the game. If she got a range buff though, that would be insane for her, and she would probably be a very, very used brawler. This buff is okay, but usually when you use Penny, you place her mortar behind walls anyway, so people don't really destroy it as often as uh, they would destroy someone's turret like Jesse. Tick also now has a much, much higher hypercharge rate, going from 25% all the way up to 40%, which is very, very good for Tick because the hypercharge rate was pretty slow, but now it seems like it's going to be a lot faster with almost double the speed to get your hypercharge. Sprout gets a 160 damage buff, which is pretty good. Sprout is a mid, mid thrower, so getting the buff is pretty nice, but it's not that big of a buff. Lolo is getting a 20 damage buff, which really isn't that much, but since she has spray tiles and sprays multiple at once, I guess it isn't that bad, so it's alright. One of the biggest buffs on this list goes to B, because she's getting a 25 extra percentage buff to her damage whenever she hits her first shot, which is absolutely insane. That's almost at a 3 times damage buff now. After B's recent nerfs, this is definitely going to help her because her nerfs just absolutely nerfed her to the ground and she wasn't as good as she used to be, but now with this, I think she's going to be a lot better in the meta. 
Gus is getting a 120 damage buff, which is pretty good for him because Gus is one of the worst support slash sniper brawlers in the game right now, so the 120 damage buff definitely makes him a more aggressive brawler. Spike is finally getting a 200 health buff after having one of the worst hypercharges and the biggest falloffs in Brawl Stars ever, so this is definitely, definitely gonna help him in the future. Although it isn't that much, it can definitely save him from a few brawlers who have spray or attacks, and I definitely see his usage rate going up even though it's already pretty high in the future. Up next, Brock is getting another hypercharged damage rocket buff. A 250 buff is actually pretty insane for him. It's getting almost to the point where it does the same amount of damage as his normal super, and he'll probably get a lot more usage in heist, but other than that, I don't really see him getting a good usage rate with his hypercharge in other game modes competitively. Getting into our first nerf is to Amber's Dancing Flames gadget, getting a 210 damage nerf, which was definitely, definitely needed because everyone was using this gadget and nobody was using the other gadget, and this gadget just dominated the meta, especially in Showdown. She was basically a mini melody. Barry's supercharge from healing other brawlers is getting a nerf. It's going from 75 to 50, so it's losing about a quarter of his supercharge, which isn't that big of a nerf, but I guess it was a little bit needed. I didn't really think Barry had that high of a usage rate, but I guess Supercell thought otherwise. I see Barry getting no competitive changes in competitive usage rate in the current meta, so I don't think it's really going to affect him that much. I think this was mainly just to stop the new trio showdown mode, so it stops Barry's from trying to camp and storm with its teammates, which makes a lot of sense. Buster is getting a 200 health nerf, which I didn't think was needed. Buster's just a very consistent brawler, and I didn't see him too much in ranked gameplay, or just in gameplay in general, but I guess it was needed. Meg is finally getting a nerf with all her billion projectiles that she has. A 20 damage health nerf to each projectile, which is pretty big, and I'm glad she's finally getting it. She deserves it. She's also just an annoying brawler. Her voice is super annoying. Up next, this brawler's getting not one, not two, but three nerfs in the next meta, which is Clancy. His supercharge rate was almost cut in half, taking now 6 hits to charge, which I guess only counts as one nerf, and his super damage at stage 3 is also getting a much, much needed nerf. Clancy is super, super overpowered, and I'm also glad he's getting a nerf, because I just got destroyed by him in almost every match I had in ranked. Frank is also getting a nerf, a 300 health nerf, he gets less health from his 1 star power, and his pool gadget's damage is getting cut in half, so now instead of doing 100% more damage, it only does 50% more damage. This was definitely definitely needed and it took them two balance changes to finally figure out how to correctly nerf frank because frank was just such a broken brawler for the past two seasons and i know he needed the buff eventually since he was one of the worst brawlers at the time but now after getting the buffs he definitely needed more and more nerfs i think his usage rate will definitely drop down especially in competitive gameplay but he will probably still be an s tier brawler maybe an a tier instead Kit's cheeseburger gadget is getting a 10% health nerf from 40% down to 30%, which isn't that much. I think Kit needs more nerfs. I hate Kit. One more kind of buff kind of rework is getting to Gale. Super now does way more damage, but the hypercharge used to have a glitch where it would shoot two damage waves instead of just one that was needed, and that just got fixed, so now it always only shoots one damage wave. Gale after this will always 100% be an S tier brawler, and probably still a top three brawler in the game. Finally, the one and only rework goes to Daryl, and he now has two supercharges max. This is huge for Daryl. He's getting his first balance change in almost two years, and he's also getting a new skin the next season. I'm very, very excited for this, and I can't wait to see how this plays out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys drop a like and subscribe if you learned something new in this video. I'll see you later.